Welcome to another video tutorial from todaygameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to create a snow globe scene as a feedback to a social media post. I want to approach this as flexible as possible using symbols and global colors to make it quick and easy to change the scene from the original autumn design to winter or spring. In order to achieve that, I use the pen tool, global colors, tapered strokes, and symbols for the leaves. I prefer a non-wide background color. The colors just look different when you don't have a burning white or a complete black as your background. I start with the circle, hold shift to constrain the proportions. To enhance the idea of a snow globe, I add a base at the bottom. I add an ellipse at the bottom, give it a darker color. And while I'm at it, I might as well start setting up the global colors. In the swatches panel, you have preset colors and you can create your own. By adding a global color, I can use the color picker, use the eyedrop icon rather than the dot, otherwise you have to press escape. I chose the white from the color field and I use the color picker for the brown. Once you picked it, you still need to click on the circle to assign it before adding it. This design is part of a five color autumn challenge. So I get to pick three more colors. One is the background and the other two will be an orange and a brown for the tree. The advantage of using global colors, I don't have to pick the perfect color right away. I can change them at any time and all objects with that color will be altered. An easy way to create a cylinder is by duplicating an ellipse. Move it down, duplicate the top one again Combine two copies with the boolean head, delete the center nodes and you have your cylinder as long as you scale proportionately and don't squash or squeeze it and increase the height of the cylinder by moving the nodes at the top or the bottom. Copies will always match up and have the same perspective. Having created the base with two cylinders and a copy of the ellipse combined with boolean head and rounded at the corners, it's a matter of coloring I have a five color limit, but I can adjust the layer opacity and layer blend modes. The light orange set to 20%. The blend mode change to add shades the brown nicely. I use a duplicate of the ellipse for the ground of the tree and as a cutout for the globe. The globe sits inside the base, so I need to adjust the bottom of the globe to match. I convert that ellipse to curves move the top node, adjust the angles and cut it from the globe via the boolean subtract. Duplicate the globe and shrink it with the contour tool with a negative value to get a smaller shape that is consistent with the outer. I add a rectangle, place it inside that smaller shape to fill the ground. Using the brown and a duplicate of that rectangle set to multiply to shade it to an even darker tone without having to use an additional color. I add another rectangle for a bit of shading to see the background through, so I color it in the background green, give it a transparent gradient, duplicate and mirror it and place it behind the shapes for the ground. It's a good time to clean up the design a little bit. I create a new layer to place all the globe elements inside. Once your design gets a little bit more complex, layers and groups are your best friend to keep it organized. A blurred ellipse set to multiply creates a nice shadow. I place that at the very bottom of my globe layer stack. I tweak the ground a little bit and then move on to the tree. I create a new layer, rename my globe as globe base and then a new layer for the tree. The quickest approach to create a tree is the pencil tool and tapered strokes. I draw a simple line, add the global color as a stroke color and adjust the width and the pressure curve of the stroke to end up with the basic trunk. All branches and smaller twigs follow the same pattern. The further away from the trunk they are, the smaller the stroke width should be. 
I have the stabilizer turned on. As a result, I get smoother lines and fewer notes, which makes it easier to edit with the note tool if I want to modify the lines later. I fast forward this part. I'm drawing more lines with thinner stroke width to create more branches without convoluting the design too much. Drawing a line the wrong way can be easily fixed by reversing the curve. I group all the lines of the tree, set the scale with object to be ticked. That way I can now scale the tree, make it a tiny bit smaller, place it in the center of the globe and can still edit and adjust with ease. The advantage of working with lines versus filled shapes is the reduced number of nodes. They are a lot easier and faster to manipulate. To add shading, I start by locking my existing design layers and create new lines using the pencil tool on top of the existing tree. Affinity Designer inherits the last setting, so I change the dark brown to the orange change the blend mode to add and lower the opacity and then alter the pressure curve to be a tapered stroke at both ends. The layer settings are not inherited so the next line I draw will be 100% and in normal mode rather than change the layer blend mode and the opacity for each individual line I group my lines and assign the layer blend mode and the opacity to the group. I can still edit individual lines, make them thinner or reduce their opacity even further. I repeat the process for darker lines, setting them to the brown global color and the blend mode to multiply, again lowering the opacity. Seeing I can't see brown on brown lines, I use the white as an interim color. I can change that once I group those lines, change back to brown, set the layer opacity to a lower level and the layer blend mode to multiply. I ground the tree by adding another blurred ellipse. To hide the rounded end of the tree trunk, I could convert it to curves and delete the notes, or I can set a erased shape on top. I choose the non-destructive way, create the shape on top using the pen tool and curving it with the note tool. I place that shape inside the group with all the brown lines, set the layer blend mode to erase and it will cut the bottom of the tree trunk nicely. To finish off this layer I add some detail. I use the circle tool, create some ellipses, convert them to curves, modify them and duplicate them while changing their sizes. Next I assign a gradient to one of the shapes. I can use global colors inside a gradient. I choose the orange and the darker red. Copy the first stone and paste the style to all others. It's easy to adjust the gradients with the gradient tool once you have assigned them to create a little bit more variation. Next up are the leaves. I create a new layer for those. Use the pen tool and create half of my leaf. I use the node tool to curve it, duplicate it, mirror it, and then combine the two halves with the boolean ed. You can always use the pen tool to create the whole shape, including the curves. I just find it easier to draw straight lines and adjust them. 
To make it easy to edit the design later, I choose to work with symbols. That way I can change the image inside that symbol and turn the leaf into something way more complex or a totally different object entirely. One leaf might look a little boring, so I copy the curve at the base of that symbol and edit it with the Node tool. Once I'm happy with it, I turn it into a second symbol, group those symbols and apply a mesh deformation to the groups. And this is where it went terribly wrong. Instead of using a mesh group, I assigned a live filter mesh, which was a function formerly used only in the pixel tool and it has now been available for everything else. It slowed down the rendering to the point where I could not work on the file anymore and I didn't notice it while I was recording until it was way too late. So here we go with live filters on symbols. Not a good idea once you have more copies of those symbols on the screen. And I ended up with 90 leaves in this design. The idea is to group the symbol in order not to change all copies of the symbol when you apply a deformation, but apply the deformation to the group, which works nicely seeing the symbol on the left stays intact while I modify the symbol on the right. Instead of the live filter I should have used a mesh group and it probably would have worked nicely. Seeing I create videos as I go they are not pre-scripted and a lot of the times I go with the flow and create on the fly. This time I should have probably tested it seeing this is a whole new version of Affinity. The solution to the problem occurred to me days after I ran into it. As a result, this video records me running into a dead end. At this stage, everything still looked good. I have two symbols, six variations. I duplicate those, turn the sync of the symbols off and can now color the copies of the symbol differently while keeping the original ones intact. I make another duplicate, give it the darker red tone. With these 18 different leaves, I can create an interesting looking cluster by rotating, flipping and repositioning those individual leaves. You might notice that the screen does not render as quickly. I move a leaf and you see the bounding box being moved, but not the leaf itself. I should have noticed then that something is slightly off, but I blamed it on the new version and maybe on my PC, even though I'm working with a rather fast gaming PC. At the moment, I'm just dealing with 18 leaves. It gets a lot worse when I start duplicating this cluster. Once I'm happy with the look of my initial cluster and edit a few leaves falling and place them on the ground, I duplicate the cluster, move it, rotate it, flip it to add variation and speed up the process of creating something that does not look like identical copies. I can always move a single leaf. Well, I thought I could. It's gotten rather slow moving a single element and before long the screen would not respond properly. The image would go all blurry on me and it was near impossible to continue to work. It ended up taking minutes for the screen to refresh. I still had no idea what went wrong. But eventually I had a semi-finished design. Once I turned the layer with the leaves off, it would render quickly. The problem definitely was with the leaves. It took another day before I worked out what the actual problem was and I made an addition to this video. Back to the final touches of the globe. The highlight is a shape created with the pen tool, curved with the node tool and added shapes on top that I drew with the pen tool, curved with the node tool and then subtracted with the boolean subtract to create the illusion of a window frame. 
I add another highlight in the lower right to increase the glossiness of the globe. For the swirl effect, I use tapered lines with altered layer blend modes. I use the pen tool, adjust the nodes, set them to smooth, duplicate that curve, scale and skew it, modify it slightly to match the globe, duplicate it again, shorten it and reduce the stroke width. I group those lines, set the stroke color to white, adjust the opacity to 40% and the blend mode to overlay. I turn the leaves back on and adjust the swirl effect to be a little bit more visible, changing it from overlay to screen. And that's the end of this version. Seeing it took me a while to work out the problem, I changed the file, deleted all leaves, created six symbols instead of two, removing the live filter and baking a mesh group quad deformation straight to the shapes. Now that I have a working file, I can show you the advantages of the global colors. Changing the green to blue changes everything that I applied the green to. I forgot the background, so I quickly color that one. I can change the color value of each global color. Turning the autumn scene into a winter wonderland with just a few clicks. And I messed up with the leaf symbols. They still have the autumn brown. I could quickly color them with the global colors or replace the symbols entirely. I move some snowflakes into the symbol, hide the original leaf curve and instead of a leaf I see the white circles. I quickly replace the content of all symbols with some pre-made snowflakes and simple circles. Without having touched the design at all it changed from the autumn colors to a winter scene. I can now go in and adjust some of the elements to fit the new scene a little bit better. I can make the globe more transparent by changing the background color of the inner globe to the blue and the gradients to a white. I turn the ground from brown to ice and white, change the color of the shadow and adjust the size of the snowflakes. By adjusting the symbol on the side, all the snowflakes in the design will be scaled accordingly. Just make sure you scale the content of the symbol, not the symbol itself. When you make changes like this, remember to save as a new file in order not to overwrite your initial design. Within five minutes, I changed our autumn scene to the winter wonderland. And just for the fun of it, I created a, another variation and made a spring version with totally different colors, the same way I did the winter scene. In this video, I used the pen tool with tapered strokes to create the tree, used global colors and symbols for the leaves, allowing me to turn them into snowflakes and flowers, changing the design quickly and easily. I hope you enjoyed this video, despite or because of the hiccup. Was it a bug or was it just an oversight and I should have known better? I think it was a bit of both. If you learned something new, please subscribe to the channel, leave a like and a comment and I will see you again soon.